Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> All right, we're live. That's right. We're here at the HDS event, and uh, they invited us, and so we accepted to come and speak on stage and help launch the new VSP. So we were talking off camera, just start, start the conversation. So you live in Palo Alto, I and do. you live right around the corner from Steve Jobs, and you see him walking around the neighborhood. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little healthy. Everything's going good with Steve. Yeah, he looks great. Great coverage in the neighborhood with the iPhone. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that AT&T will make sure Steve Jobs' neighborhood gets good iPhone coverage. He's probably saying, why is everyone complaining about AT&T? I have no problem in my neighborhood. <laughs> well, hey, great to have you on. Obviously, uh, I'm really excited to, ha to talk to you right now about Hit one, Hitachi at a great event. Two, you're uh, dealing with the relationship there. But we had a great uh, time at the York Show, VMworld. The Cube was mm. uh, a centerpiece. We had... 60 guests on, and uh, we had Todd Nielsen, all your partners, all the top yeah. executives, and, and customers. And we heard a lot of great conversations. Uh, one of the things that Todd Nielsen was bragging about and talking about, and I'd be talking about it too, is he said that for every dollar license of VMware license, he throws off $15 in ecosystem revenue. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's going to attract a crowd. Yeah, partners, of course. <laughs> so, what's the update on that? Well, so, and you know, it's actually, uh, what that is, it's a testament to the fact that we are fundamentally a platform. And, and a, we are a next generation platform that's ushering a new architecture, if you will, that combines the best of what we've done on the web as well as in private data centers. And when you have a platform of such magnitude, it has impact up and down the stack. And that creates a lot of opportunity for the ecosystem because customers say, you know what, this is a fundamentally new way of doing things, a new way of architecting and delivering my IT, and therefore I'm going to rethink. I'm going to rethink the servers, the storage, the networking, the security, how I write my applications, how the middleware behaves. And, and when you have people fundamentally rethinking things like that, uh, it creates opportunity up and down the stack, and they're willing to, to evaluate new vendors, new approaches, and I think what you're seeing is a testament. And you know, this is not necessarily new. If you go back the last 30, 40 years, major new platforms that have come along have had uh, a pretty significant ecosystem around them. And uh, what's really surprising is that one to $15 number about two, three years ago was one to 11, which shows you um, the investment. Still that people pretty are making, big number. Uh, significant numbers. So let's talk about uh, VMware's culture. VMworld was a very, uh, how do I say this? Uh, Woodstock-like environment. It was intoxicating. People were just, it, it, it was energy around. Uh, compare that to last week we were at Oracle Open World. Some were saying closed world. Um, Oracle's got a different vibe. I mean, their clothes are saying, this is the box. It's fully integrated. I didn't see a lot of excitement. Um, and you you manage mm -hmm. the Oracle relationship. Mm -hmm. um, did you, did you one? Did you see the same thing? And and how do you compare and contrast the two views between Oracle and say SAP or Hitachi and say you know someone who's got a closed mm -hmm. architecture? You know, I think it's it's a fundamentally different approach. I think uh, Oracle's message is they'll provide every layer of the stack, they'll integrate it, and they will be you know the one stop that everybody goes to. But I think and what we and you know vendors like SAP and Hitachi and others talk about is. Well, we are going to be the best at our layer. We're going to do certain things extremely well. We're going to do it in an uh, open and pluggable way so that you can plug in pretty much any other vendor or technology that you like. And I think what this speaks to, it's, it's two fundamentally different approaches. And, and you know, it, it forces customers uh, to go down um, to make that decision. But what we find is a lot of customers will buy into a vision but they'll have different philosophies and how they want to implement it, especially at different layers of the stack. So that's why we think in the long run, the open approach, giving customers a lot of choice at different layers of the stack, uh, in terms of service providers, private versus public hosting options, I think giving customers a lot of those choices uh, is a lot more attractive. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, the, for me, you know, I'm old enough to remember the client-server revolution and the PC revolution, and, you know, a lot of companies made a lot of money. I mean, a lot of wealth was created sure. during that whole, you know, PC kind of grew organically, and people started networking together with Novell, and, <laughs> you know, and you had print servers, and next thing you know, they're like, hey, you know, we should actually put this all together. We'll run the mini computer. Mm -hmm. we'll run the, hey, we'll run this SAP Oracle stuff on it. Boom. Accenture's were born. All these consulting firms were doing deployments, and it, you know it, it transformed businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing that same dynamic now. That's why I'm so focused on that ecosystem number because 
I believe you guys are in a great position to be that next catalyst. And, and I think that, that was what was so exciting about VMworld is that actually with Moritz and, say, Gelsinger at EMC and, you know, Tom George is at NetApps among, and among others here, mm -hmm. you know, we heard from, uh, you know, here at H CEO at Hitachi, you have an ecosystem of big players mm -hmm. who would ignite consulting firms, a new way of doing things. So the question is, <laughs> what is that new way? And, and obviously the framework and abstracting away the complexities, but for the folks out there deploying, the consultants, what's the mindset and what are they doing right now? And, and for the folks who don't know what to do, what would you recommend? Yeah, well I think, I think the clear cut observation is that the train has left the station in the sense that the division that we've been outlining for the last few years is something that customers have en masse adopted and they're moving systematically but surely to implementing that in different ways and I think when you speak with systems integrators and the ecosystem you know they see the value and the power of that vision and they're also rallying around it uh, coming up with their solutions uh, for their layer uh, and helping customers kind of get to that destination point. And, you know, there's been some criticism of folks out there saying, you know, craplications, I've heard that term mm -hmm. a bunch of times by some bloggers. Um, but the reality is they are moving there and we've, we talked about proof points at VMworld. Is there anything that you're saying saying, hey, this is, you know, without a doubt the train's left the station, but here are examples of bona fide environments that, that it's a no-brainer to be virtualized on? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, so, we call it a, the customer journey. So there are three phases, we believe, to the typical customer's journey to getting to 100% virtualization, to some of the benefits we talk about of cloud computing. You know, the first step is they start implementing virtualization in test and dev environments. Those are safe environments, they're not very demanding. The next is to go into what we call IT production. So uh, this is where you take your IT resources, um, file and print servers, domain controllers, app, um, active directory, and DNS, like, DNS, and you virtualize them. And the third and final stage is what we call business production. So this is where you take your business process applications, your mission critical apps, and start virtualizing them. Now, with each successive generation of technology, both the VMware's and our ecosystems, customers are able, are able to go through those phases with much more confidence. So today, for example, if you look at the performance of any application on, on VMware, we can virtualize you know, just about any app and handle it and, and show no difference compared to physical. Now there are a lot of skeptics out there and they have to be you know, taken to the lab and, and we demonstrate that to them. But we've got customers running intense databases, we've got customers running SAP, we even have a lot of customers running Oracle applications and databases on VMware and it runs as well as, if not better than um, physical. And on, just to give you one proof point, um, we just set a world record for database performance. So the previous record was set, I believe last September, by Oracle Rack. We just set a record in conjunction with ParExcel, which is an up-and-coming columnar database vendor. We went through the TPCH benchmark, they came and did the audit, and we set a world record for, I, uh, for database performance, but we also set a world record for cost performance. So the previous record was something like $5 or $6 per query, wow. including all the hardware and TCO. Our record was at something less than a dollar a query. So so that, that, that takes that whole price performance kind of concept exactly. and says, hey, you know, we can blow it away and lower price. Right, so not only can you run extremely demanding things on vSphere 4, but you also get the economic benefits. I mean, this is the thing. Them. I mean, this is the thing that's intoxicating is that, that you know that those numbers do resonate with the, with the ecosystem. And you guys have been dealing with an ecosystem for a while. And VMware's changed, so there's been you know good mm -hmm. things. Hey, you know, there's obviously a lot of praise with VMware, but your business has changed. Yep. There's been some criticisms in the partner ecosystem around you know, hey, you know, they, I, they told me they're going to do this, but you know, you guys got to make a business and you, you're making mm -hmm. changes. <laughs> what you know, what Paul laid out at VMworld was this is what we're doing. It was, right. it was a clear uh, communications. And so as the Alliance mm -hmm. executive, you got to communicate, and that's a core part of your challenge. Absolutely. So communicate to the folks out there about the ecosystem strategy. What are the safe zones? Right. <laughs> and and Because that's all they want to know. Mm -hmm. Say, I, you know, one, where are the growth areas? Right. Tell me what the growth areas are, and where do I play? Mm -hmm. and, and also, tell us where not to play. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, fundamentally, let me, let me lay all that out step by step. The, um, the philosophy, you know, as a starting point, is that we want to be an open platform. So we will continue to uh, interoperate with as many vendors up and down the stack as possible. So, you know, here I am at a Hitachi Data Systems event, no problem at all. Uh, so we support all the hardware vendors, all the software vendors equally. 
Secondly, um, we want to be, being an open platform means we're going to start opening up the platform. So more APIs, more enablements. So this morning, one of the things that was mentioned is uh, the vStorage APIs and how they allay, allow a storage array to do a lot of core processing in the at the array level rather than at the virtual machine level, and that makes the overall setup much more efficient. So we need to continue doing that. Now, this is something we started just a few years ago. So. It's a relatively, we are relatively early in the cycle. Maybe we're in the third inning of learning yeah. how to open up the platform. And there are, are uh, starts and stops, there's learnings along the way. But you're better down in the lower parts of the stack, that's where your core competency is. Exactly. Works, and you're moving up exactly. through the frameworks. So, but that's the thing I tell the ecosystem, is we are learning how to open up the platform, open it up to everybody, you know, not just a handful of vendors, and we'll get better over time, number one. Uh, number two is, we certainly have a direction or roadmap, and we are articulating and we're getting better at articulating where we're going and where the opportunities for the ecosystem. If I could just explain a few of them, you know, security. As people move to the cloud, they're very concerned about their data and the security of the overall system. So there's a lot to do in that realm. We announced a couple of products, but there's a lot more that can be done. And we're in active discussions with a lot of security vendors about what those things look like. Um, same thing goes with management. That's a tremendous opportunity. Yeah. As environments get more complex, as people move to 100% virtualization. And you guys have right? We That's have vCenter, but we've designed that to be an open framework. So you can plug in your management product into that, or you can plug into the vCenter APIs and extract information out of, about virtual machines and manage them through your pane of glass. So, you know, it's pretty You're not trying to know. project your view of the world. You're saying, hey, here's vCenter. Right. If someone comes up with a better mousetrap, God bless them. God bless them and let the customer decide. And the fact of the matter is we have 200,000 customers and we hope to gain many, many more. And each of them will have different requirements and preferences. Sometimes vCenter is the answer, sometimes it's something else. Sometimes It's a long-term view. I mean, I think that's right. So, so let's take a kind of like go back in history. Microsoft, Final mm -hmm. question, I'm getting the, getting the hook here. Final question, okay. Microsoft has always was great in the early days. You know, they uh -huh. knew if you were on their side, everyone made a lot of money. If you were an enemy, they killed you. <laughs> so, so, not that VMware is going to be that evil, um, but you know, in an ecosystem, you've got to articulate the mm -hmm. boundaries. Where shouldn't people play? Can, you, can mm -hmm. you talk about that publicly? Or no comment? Well, what I would say is, you know, fundamentally, we're a very different company than Microsoft, and we also live in a different era than when they really uh, you know, came to life in, in the 90s and 80s. Um, we live in an era where open source is, is critical. You have to support it. You have to play in an open source way. You know, we've made a lot of our stuff open source. Um, you have to... Uh, you have to be open and to all oh, there's a lot of standards out more there. More transparent. There's obviously. more transparency. Yeah. There's more vendors out there than there were in the 80s and 90s. Uh, so I think we, ha so I, I think it's apples and oranges, number one. Uh, number two, I think we have to earn that trust of the ecosystem. So we have to, every day, every quarter, every year, you know, demonstrate that there's opportunities for And you feel good about that right now? Just kind of a, on, a, on, a, on a 10 being high satisfaction, where are you at in, in, in terms of your level of yeah. satisfaction? Well, you know, I, the way I think about it is our ecosystem is larger than ever before. You know, we have something like 25,000 partners worldwide, dozens and dozens of new ones sign up. Uh, the amount of investment the partners are making, you know, as, you, as an example for, at VMworld, is tremendous. So they continue to reap the economic rewards of investing in VMware. Um, Investment I, areas going forward, any new initiatives that you want to share with folks? Well, I think you know the desktop is a tremendous area of growth. You know, We laid out our vision of end user computing rather than just desktop virtualization. There's lots to be done in that space, whether it's management or security or storage or networking. There's lots of opportunity there. You know, We also laid out our vision of the applications platform. You know, People want to write a whole new generation of applications, call them cloud-based apps. Yep. But there's a lot of opportunity for the underlying applications platform. Um, and the other thing I would say for the ecosystem is the fact that the opportunity for them keeps growing. So yeah. three years ago, you know, for a dollar spent on VMware, there was $11 spent on the ecosystem. Today, that $11 has become 15. Yeah. So we are growing the opportunity for the ecosystem. We're here at the Cube. I'm getting the hook. I want to go all this. This is a worthy segment for 30 minutes, but uh, you're in Palo Alto. You can come to our Cube. We can check in with you guys. Absolutely. Really exciting area growing on the ecosystem side. I think, you know, we called it VMware, $100 billion market cap, <laughs> uh, and we think they're going to be there in a few years. So, uh, Barak Patel, thank you so much thank for coming you. on. We're going to go to okay, another John. guest. Thanks thank for you. stopping by. Thank you. Unannounced, but we love VMware partnering with uh, Hitachi Data Systems with their new uh, big platform. So uh, we're going to come back uh, with David Shepard from IO On Demand. Thank you, Brock. Okay. <laughs> we love VMware. VMware is great.